Well, Mark, good to chat with you and good to meet you for the first time as well. Good morning. Um, I wonder whether a Saturday away game at Blackburn and then a Tuesday away game at QPR is the, is the absolute height of Saturday-Tuesday fixtures in a domestic season. How are you feeling going into it? Good. Feel really good. You know, when you analyse the game afterwards, um, it was a uh, very strong performance again. And uh, we feel like we're coming and saying familiar things all the time. But we'll have to look at the facts, you know. It's a, a hell of a young team. Um, we've got an absolutely horrific injury list that I've inherited from day one. Um, however, the guys are going out there, they're rolling their sleeves up and they're playing with real intensity and aggression. I think I heard a comment from Blackburn's manager saying it was like trying to play through a wall. Um, and it's all testament to the defensive shape and discipline from the lads. And we know that the, uh, the form away from home has been horrific from the start of the season. And... Uh, since my time in, we've managed to get two points away from home on the board, which is nowhere near good enough. And it's all down to basically just putting in a really stable uh, defensive shape. And we can build on that and lay solid foundations, you know. And it's probably just big moments in the game at the moment, Jamie, that's costing us. And of course, that's normal when you have young uh, players in the team like Brody Spencer, Ben Jackson, Etienne Kamara, Brahima Diara, who come on at the end. And we've also got to remember that young Radoni and Kasumi are stepping up from League One as well. Um, and we are just expecting our older experienced players to keep doing what they're doing, but also to guide them um, so that they're going out there with a good feeling. And what we're doing is we're putting real clarity on the training pitch every day so that they know exactly what they've got to do in and out of possession. Um, but as I said before, it's just touching on the main point of handling the bigger moments, um, the most important moments in the game to be a, a tad more concentrated and a lot more aggressive in everything we're doing. And I'm sure that we'll fight our way out of this. You use that word foundation. How big is that for you in your side? Yeah, it's massive. You know, you could see that um, everybody keeps coming on, on the style of play, how we are out of possession. We look so solid. Everyone's saying it's a very well drilled and coached team. Um, and it's a credit to my staff because we're working relentless on it in the training ground. There's no stone left on turn and it's meticulous in everything we do um, we're also creating chances as well which is the hard part and we're getting players in good positioning in the box but as I said if Jordan Rhodes shoots it over the bar or young Radone scraps his shot when he's six metres out it's something that we can't control you know and the lads have got to bring that uh, execution in and the thing about it is that they're more than capable of doing that and like I told the lads this week as well, is just keep your chest up and roll your sleeves up because we know that if you weren't a good team and you were bottom of the league, you were going to these teams like uh, Blackburn and QPR and Sunderland and you would be getting murdered. And that's not the case at all. We're actually the team that's looking dominant. I was so proud of them in respect to their fitness levels as well. You, you all know how big I am on the intensity in the training. And that's the reason I do it, is I push these players to the limits because I want to finish game strong. And you could see that Blackburn pretty much sat in and they weren't like a mid-press block the way we were. They actually sat in as deep as you could possibly be because we had them on the ropes and we just couldn't find that final right hook to put them on the, the canvas, you know. And this is unfortunately where we stand at the moment. But we just always try to sensibilise the guys and take the emotion out of it and look at the facts of the games. Um, I know we could be doing a little bit better in ball possession because we turn the ball over quite a bit in important moments in the game. So that's another theme that we'll be looking at so that we tidy up the second ball. Um, but as I said, these guys are giving everything and, and they're really focused on what they're doing, Jamie. To stick with that boxing analogy then, how important is it for you to land that first blow or indeed get that first goal, particularly on Tuesday? Yeah, you've seen that against uh, like uh, Millwall, you know, when they come, they're an informed team and you uh, tells everyone he tried to score, but however, it was probably a cross. And as soon as the, the ball goes in, you just know that we're not going to lose the game because we have such a solid base there. Um, however, we need to get players that are capable of scoring goals to take their chances and I'm sure it'll come. It's not a blame culture here at all. We're here to support each other. We know the situation we're in. The club's in a transitional period and we're fighting for our lives, but we're doing it with young players who are trying to develop as well. And that's why I'm so uh, proud of what our fans were at the weekend because 
I know they had their concerns during the game and stuff, but I was a strange feeling because they clapped us and pushed our young players to the very final whistle and they clapped all the young players off, you know, and, and I'm so proud to work for this club and these guys because they mean the world to us as a team and these young guys are going to need them from now right up until the World Cup break until we get our Hogs and our Lees and these type of big characters, Matty Pearsons and all that, back in the group, your Anjurines and so on. I know it's often said in football, the fans are really important to any side, of course they are, but just how big are the fans for you right now as a side and how big is it for you that they're with you? Yeah, it's massive, you know, like um, uh, there was no prouder moment for me when we played rather than away and I went out in the warm-up and you're sitting bottom of the league and the fans are actually shouting like it's Mark Fallen and Blue and White Army and it's a big feeling as a Scotsman down here to have that sort of respect from them but what I could say from the fans is that they, they could see clearly how much work I'm putting into this with my staff, how much support I'm giving to these players in a, in a terrible situation that we find ourselves in and what we're trying to do is we're trying to just head this challenge uh, face on and show that we've got humility and respect for the situation, but we're really trying our best in regards to what we're trying to improve week on, week out, building up to the games. And in that respect, we're, we're, we've got a good style of play. We've got a really solid shape against the ball and everyone's commenting, commenting on it. However, it would probably take maybe a lesser performance in that one of my big centre-back scores a couple of goals from a set play um, because you know what it's like when you get the three points. The whole uh, building feels better about themselves and we start climbing up this league. But as I said, I've never lost any belief in these guys at any moment. Um, I support them and I see on the training ground day in, day out, what quality they have. Um, it's just about um, being concentrated in the big moments in the game. I think football and pressure go hand in hand and I'm sure you know that as well. How does Mark Fotheringham deal with pressure? Yeah, listen, uh, uh, and maybe people think it's, it's stupid and... Uh, no stupid, but it's a kind of analogy I always use. Like, um, I'm from a working class family, so I had a father that had, I'm one of four, and my dad was working scaffolding for low money, and he's now got his own business, which is a different story. And my mum folds the towels up and all that in the laundry in Nine Miles Hospital. And what I always say is that that's a pressure when you've got to go out and provide for your young family when you're two young people and you've not come from money. Um, so I know our fans are also that type of people as well that come from a really industrial town and they're hard workers and that's what I want to represent for them and for me this is not a pressure whatsoever when I come into this job I knew the challenge and I wanted to accept it because what I wanted to do is show everybody how important it is that I could show I could adapt and also that I would take this challenge head on and improve the situation. And I feel that with performances, we've 100% improved that. And what we've done is we've improved that we're probably eight to nine starters that normally start that have never been on the training ground with me from the first day. So what I really enjoy is that I love working with the guys that have come to the fore um, and they're also improving and it's going to make the squad a hell of a lot more competitive come the World Cup break. Just on that World Cup break, actually, how much importance are you laying on that period for you to galvanise this squad? It's absolutely massive um, because we have some uh, really creative players who have been injured from day one and we have uh, a lot of leaders there that are not in the group at the moment, i.e. my captain, Hogg. Um, I've got three captains, Hogg, Pearson and Leasy, and I've been missing them of late. And Leasy was hit and formed for me that was showing you was the way everybody holds Leasy in high regard, he's one of the best defenders in the league. You know, there's no ifs and buts. So to lose him the last two games has been a massive loss for us, especially when we're getting clean sheets and we're looking really solid. Um, but what I try and do is I'm not a person that moans about these situations. I believe in the other players that are stepping in. I want to give them a good feeling. And you could see that's the case because Big Boy, we come in there on Saturday and got man the match and was outstanding. Um, and I thought him and Helic played really well together, and that's just the flip side of football. Mm -hmm. However, when this period comes where we'll have a break, it'll be a good chance to get these big leaders in the team, galvanise us as a group, get our creative players like uh, Anjurin, Pat Jones, Tyree Simpson, these guys just to slowly build them and get them back on the grass. When you see them on the grass training with the group, it gives you such a lift. 
Uh, and I'm sure in this period you'll start to see a really moulded and shaped squad coming together again. You said there isn't a, a blame culture at this football club. So what culture does exist and how unified are you as a club? That's at board level, right the way through down to the academy and you in between as well. Uh, it's an unbelievable club in that respect because everyone's here for to support you. Um, so the support staff I've got uh, in regards to the medical side of things or the recruitment side behind the scenes, everyone's working so hard um, and they're identifying the issues that we've got. However, everybody keeps coming back with the same message that we're performing so well and that it'll eventually come. But we do know it's a precarious situation we're in. Um, but as I said, this club's got everything there, all the tools you need, and it's just about the young lads performing and trying to find a consistency. And you often find with young players that sometimes there's highs and lows. What I find from probably the Middlesbrough game on now is that we're very consistent in our performances, but we just haven't quite f uh, finished our chances in big moments in the game and maybe lost concentration in big moments in the game. But that's normal with young players. The only thing is, is that it's been highlighted and exposed more because we're sitting bottom of the table. If we'd had a really good start to the season, we could have handled these situations where we've maybe had a win and then two losses and then a win but we know that every single win from us and now until the end of the season is like a cup final and that's the way we've got to think in our head it's like an end game you know you have to go to win and that's the way we're setting up we're going there to be solid we're going there to play uh, our style of football we're going there to, to hurt the opposition and we're going there to be solid to build foundations it's a broad question this next one i appreciate but what does success look like for you this season? Yeah, as I said, you know, I, I, all I want to do is keep this team in the league. That's my remit. You know, we know the transitional period we're in. Um, the chairman's decided to sell the club to new owners. Um, we've got a very young group, uh, especially because of the injury list that I've inherited from the first day I've come in. Um, however, I'm still a determined guy who wants to win games. And I, all I've said to them is I've set a target of how many wins they need to stay in the league. And then if anything happens after that, we all know in football, and we're all experienced enough, that when you get a few wins and you could get two or three players back from injury and also maybe do some business in the January transfer period, everything could be looking so bright and rosy again and we could be coming in here and enjoying our press conferences more. And as I said, the fans are they're really proud of this young group because they know the history of where these players are coming from, they know that the Camaras, the Diaras, the Ben Jacksons, the Brody Spencers, they're all coming from their own academy. So there's a there's an atmosphere there in that respect that there's a frustration from what happened last season, a frustration from what happened at the start of the season. However, they do believe in these young guys and they're really proud of them that they're coming into the team and showing that they're fighting every week to try and get wins. And just on that point of, of trying to achieve that target, then you as, the, as an individual, you've got the backing from the board to do that. Yeah, of course, you know, that's why I've come in here and I signed a long term contract. Um, and as you could see, with uh, the situation we're in, if the performances weren't good and you were looking at it from the outset saying, oh, they're bottom of the table and they're getting murdered every week, then you would understand. However, the, the feedback and the messages that's in and around the club is that. We're supporting young players, we're producing good performances, and it's just the big moments in the game. And you know how it is, if you find that consistency in your performances, generally what happens when you get your more important uh, senior players back who have lived and breathed the championship year in, year out, they know how to deal with these situations and manage these situations better and what the younger ones are at the moment. And what they could do is they could also guide these young players during the game because they're in the game, they're the ones that could affect it. We're the guys that prepare them all week. We put in the preparation and we give them real clarity on what they're doing. But when you cross over that white line, you as a player has got to take responsibility to go and win games for your club. That's what you're getting paid to do. You talk about those young players and specifically the B-team graduates, the ones out on loan right now. How closely are you monitoring their progress this season? Yeah, absolutely. I've spoke to the two groups of loan players as well and I wanted to let them know that it's important that I care for them and I could see what they're doing, you know. I watched uh, some games through the week where some of our lads were playing as well and it's just keeping in contact with them and I speak to Foxy a lot about their performances and He's a guy I admire and know as well in the building. He's an experienced uh, player from, obviously, years in the championship. 
Um, so it's it's great that we could have that dialogue. But at the moment, you you guys understand the situation we're in, and my main focus is to make sure this team is performing, playing with a real style, and being solid week in week out. Lastly, from me, then just on QPR, what do you make to them as opponents? Good side, um, very attractive team. Um, and uh, uh, of course, Michael Beale is a very, very well respected uh, coach in the game, and he's someone that I'm really looking forward to meeting. And uh, uh, hopefully, we could have a chat in a nice manner after the game. But hopefully, I've got the three points when we're going back on the bus because I know that we're capable, and I know that they know they'll be in for the game as well because they know when they analyze us how we performed against Blackburn that you're no team at the bottom of the table lacking confidence if you could go and produce that sort of performance. You're welcome, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, team news, are you expecting to have any players back uh, for tomorrow? Uh, no, it's actually got lighter. Um, Etienne Kamaras took a knock on his hip flexor, so he's looking like a real doubt. Um, so we just need to monitor that, Steve, today to see how he is. But at the moment, he's definitely looking like a doubt. That's a, a big blow, particularly with uh, David Kasumi also suspended, isn't it? Yeah, it's a massive blow, and that's just the way it's been at this period of the season, you know. Um, it's not injuries that's getting caused by overtraining or overuse injuries. It's all about the impact or maybe some of the guys coming down with uh, like uh, fevers and different types of like sort of calendula fever. Um, Lizzy had unfortunately COVID and there has been a spike in COVID at the moment about the area because some of the staff internally have had that as well. Um, but we're just trying to manage the situation as best we can. We know we've got these two important games coming up before the World Cup break. And all I can tell you is now is that I'm absolutely determined to throw every single bit of energy that I've got into this team so that we get points in these next two games before the World Cup break. I, I'm sure you won't want to give your, your team away, but I presume you have an idea of how you're going to cover for, for Etienne and for, for David. Yeah, of course, Stephen. You know, that's the fun thing is that um, there's never one minute that I'm switching off from the situation. So whether you're finished training or whether whether you've got a day off and I'm in the car driving to go and meet a colleague or whatever, my head's 24-7 about the situation. I know how important it is to this great club and to these fans to stay in the league. I'm doing every single thing I can to make sure this young group's ready. And you could see that the way they're performing. They're performing out their skin. They're just no dealing with the big moments in the games. Um, but we do deserve a little rub of the green. And I'll maybe take a set play or someone to get a half chance that we probably don't expect to score and we go and score. And we'll be coming home with the three points after Tuesday's game. It does feel like um, with those two players down, you're already missing hockey. That's pretty much your almost your whole, apart from Jack Rodoni, almost your whole first choice midfield missing, isn't it? Yeah, Steve, you're actually probably missing about nine starters. Mm. And that's been from day one. So if you go through them, you're talking about Anjarin, Pat Jones, creative players who could score goals. Tyree Simpson could score goals. Matty Pearson, warrior, a defender. Tom Lees, warrior, defender. Kasumi, one of the best ball winners, recoverers of the league. Uh, Kamara, who's stepped up. Hogg, my captain, he epitomises everything this club's about. Um, and I'm probably even forgetting players. Turton and Utah, two, two top performers of late that were the big reason why we got that massive point away at Middlesbrough and could have won. The, the, the reason we got were great, solid win against Millwall. Um, but guys, I keep saying to you, I'm not the guy to complain about this. You know, like you, you, you lads are the ones that point out. I never point out to you is because what I do is I roll my sleeves up I focus on the guys I've got because they're capable. There's no way that you could look at the game and analyse it without emotion and think these lads are not performing because there is no way you go to Blackburn who are second in the league and play a solid performance like that and actually hem them in for the last 20 minutes and look like at every other opportunity you're going to score a goal. 
Um, so that's the real frustration part for me. Do you feel like, um, I know everyone, you're going to keep getting January questions, I'm afraid, but do you feel yeah. like adding, adding a bit more depth to the squad um, might be a, a priority? Yeah, listen, there's no doubt um, I'm really lucky that I've got Lee Brombe. He works night and day. He's the hardest worker at the club, in my opinion. Um, and he cares so much about the situation. And he's the guy that's working with his recruitment staff to put things in place for January. But we also know the reality is that the chairman wants to sell the club. And we respect that. And we know that there's no any big fancy treasure chest that the likes of Blackburn and QPR and all that have got. We haven't got that type of money to spend on players. We haven't got that type of money to go and pay transfers for players. But what we can do is we've got experienced people in the building in regards to Lee and his staff and Dave Baldwin, and I'm sure that there will be business in January. And I think it would be good for us to do it because I feel that the group needs that extra little bit of lift with personnel, personnel and a different type of energy in the building. And also what I feel is that when we get our injured players back that were injured from the minute I come in the building, they're going to be like new signings, you know? And that's what they will be. They will actually look like new signings to me. Yeah, I mean, Lee seems to be being made. Um, he's He seems to be targeted by the fans at the moment. Uh, do, do you feel like that's fair? How, how do you feel the, the January, uh, sorry, the summer recruitment was? I appreciate you weren't here. Steve, it's absolutely something that I've got no concern with at the moment whatsoever because what I'm doing is I'm focusing so much on this team, what I'm doing on the training pitch, how I'm trying to build this team and develop them to go and be competitive in the league. Although we've got the the issues with the, the injury situation, all I focus on is the pitch work, what me and my staff could influence, what we could do with these players to make them competitive work on their style of play, work on their solid shape against the ball and everything else in that regards, it's something that I can't influence, Steve, you know, what went on in the summer in re regards to recruitment. We are where we are. When we look at our injury list and you look at the names and the personnel there, there's some seriously good players, some seriously big leaders there. And when we get them all back, we'll be a very strong group. And we know that football could change so fast as soon as you start winning games and you've got that personal personnel in, everybody above you starts worrying and you start to catch momentum. And before you know it, you're out of the situation that you were in. And all you guys will be telling us at the, the end of the season, it's a good job you've done. And that's what Marima is, you know. I want to make sure this team stays in the league and they do it with a real focus and discipline and a real determination about the group. Gap now is, is six points. How important is it not to let that gap grow before the World Cup break? Yeah, that's the message I keep uh, repeating. Um, we need to get these two games out of the way, go down there with big confidence and take a lot of confidence from how we performed against a really strong Blackburn team. They're sitting, I think they're second in the league, maybe. Yeah. So, as I said, there was a lot of positives to take. And as I said, it was a strange atmosphere again because... The travelling fans were amazing. They backed these young guys right to the end. They clapped them off the pitch. Um, listen, for me as a head coach, there's no prouder moment when we win a game and I go up and clap them because I want to show them my appreciation. But as you could understand, I'm a very emotional guy as well and I care about the situation and I hate losing. And I'm the first one to uh, try and control my emotions because I know that it's not an emotional period we need here. It's a period where we focus on what we can influence on the pitch. Um, and as I said, we are so focused on getting these points in the next two games to go into that uh, World Cup break with a good feeling about ourselves. Great stuff. That's all from me, Matt. Best of luck. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Cheers.